Welcome to the United States President's Unit. We're going to be studying the first seven presidents of the United States, from George Washington all the way through Andrew Jackson, and everything in between. So get your notes out, and make sure that you are following along as we go through these slides. And also write down any questions that you may have on the margin of your, of your packet. Remember, if you have your packet completed and you take the unit test at the end of this um, packet on Moodle, then you may be eligible to join into the constructive classroom that we're going to be, uh, or the constructivist classroom that we're going to be having during this unit. So good luck, work hard, and pay attention. All right, George Washington was our first president. He served from 1789 to 1797. Um, and as you can see there for his background, he, his public service is, was nothing new. He was in the public eye for most of his life. He was born in Virginia on February 22, 1732. He was born into a pretty wealthy planter family. Uh, but when he married Martha Custis in 1759, he became one of the richest planters, and many say the richest planter, in the entire United States. His father died when he was 11, so he became the owner of uh, a smaller plantation. His career began in the British Army. He was an Army officer during the French and Indian War. And after that, he became more America-minded. He served in the First Continental Congress, so he protested against and tried to um, discuss with the British and against the British. He served in the Second Continental Congress, and then he was so well-liked and such a natural leader that he was appointed as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution. He led the Army through the American Revolution, into our uh, the new nation. He beat the British and with help from many others and he was eventually chosen as the president of the Constitutional Convention. So he was a military leader, a political leader, and eventually he becomes a our national leader as the first United States president in 1789. He was also elected to a second term as U.S. president and all said and done, he served from 1789 to 1797. After retiring to Mount Vernon in 1797, he died two years later. Here's a picture of George Washington in his younger years in 1776 as uh, crossing the Delaware and attacking the Hessians. And then we have Washington's presidency in 17, uh, from 1789 to 1797. So he was sworn in as president in 1789, as soon after the Constitution was uh, ratified. John Adams was chosen as his vice president. And Congress, under his, uh, under his rule, Congress passed the Federal Judiciary Act, which created the Supreme Court of the United States with only five justices. In Washington, his job was to appoint those justices, so he appointed John Jay as the first chief justice. That's a perfect example of uh, checks and balances. Congress had to create the Supreme Court, but then the president got to choose the Supreme Court. And who do you think approved those appointments? Well, it would be Congress. Then uh, Washington got to select his cabinet, who acted as his advisors. <clears throat> those Advisors were Thomas Jefferson in the Department of State, Henry Knox, he was the head of the War Department, Alexander Hamilton was the Treasury Department, and Edmund Randolph served as the Attorney General. These four men had been with Washington throughout his um, military years and his political years, and they would continue to be a great source of knowledge and advice for Washington. Here's... Um, George Washington being sworn in as our first president. He has his hand on a Bible, and he is saying uh, his oath of office, which is drawn out or spelled out in the United States Constitution. Article 2, Section, I believe, 4. Okay, now after the uh, Constitution was written and the new government went into power, 
Hamilton, uh, Alexander Hamilton, worked to solve many of the problems that came about because of money in the United States. First of all, there was a lot of debt. And so Hamilton worked to combine all state and national debt into one large debt so that it was easier to pay off. Kind of like your credit cards today. If you have 10 credit cards, they're all maxed out. It's easier to refinance all of them into one big debt and pay on it rather than 10 little debts. They'll take forever to pay off. Hamilton also issued bonds to begin paying off debt. Bonds were kind of like credit or um, printing, printing money, printing credit for the country so that they could pay off the debt. Individuals could buy these bonds and eventually um, it's kind of like people giving a loan to the government and use that loan money to pay off debt. He also created the first bank of the United States and it was the bank used by the government to deposit money and to borrow money from. And, and Congress had the power to make this bank, had the power to make the money, He had, uh, and Congress had the, the power to um, borrow and raise taxes as well. He also suggested taxes to raise money for the government, such as the whiskey tax. And uh, the whiskey tax was extremely unpopular because whiskey is something that people want and they don't want to have to pay a tax on. They, uh, you know, hold that near and dear to their hearts. So the gist is this. Western farmers, they didn't like this whiskey tax because they made their corn into whiskey to sell to eastern cities. Whiskey was kind of like today, we have bottled water. Well, it's, it's important. And uh, back in 1794, whiskey was extremely important to those Western farmers to make a living. It was cheaper, it was easier to transport to Eastern cities, and they could make a lot of money off of it. So in 1794, Western farmers began the Whiskey Rebellion. Farmers took up arms and chased away tax collectors. And they kind of made it kind of scary out on the Western frontier for tax collectors to go and do their job. So Washington's job, his one of his powers is to enforce federal laws because he's the chief executive. So he sent 13,000 soldiers, and he led 13,000 soldiers west and put the rebellion down. And when the farmers saw such a huge and powerful force, they uh, quickly agreed to pay the tax. Here's an image of American farmers doing what, the, uh, what Americans do best, burning tax collectors' houses and tarring and feathering tax collectors. They saw the taxes as unfair, so they fought against them. 